Beat Depression UK show on Liberty Radio. Beating depression through the power of faith. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Beat Depression UK radio program, a show that brings you hope and inspiration to show you that you can learn to live without mental health issues. And we do this through our real life stories and also give you tips. So on today's show, we have a young man who's going to share his struggles as a teenager and also the serious things that it led to that could have actually ended his life. But thankfully, thank God, he found help in time and has managed to turn his whole life around. But first, if you would like to get in touch with us, as always, we have our 24-hour helpline available for you on 020-7686-6000. You can also send us a message on WhatsApp, which is 020-7686-6010. And if there is a topic that you would like to see discussed on this program, you can drop us a line on UK at uckg.org. But first... Let's go to Daniel's story. Welcome to the show, Daniel. Lovely to have you. Thank you, sir. Pleasure to be here. So can you tell us when uh, your issue started? Was it, it was quite young, wasn't it? Yes. Um, I would say that I was exposed to many things when I was younger and also with family problems and moving around much. Um, I believe... From the age of four, we moved to Portugal, from Portugal to Luxembourg, from Luxembourg then to England. So there was quite a lot of movement and different cultures and also um, different surroundings. And there was no, I could say, stability. So in different countries, faced with many different things. But here in the UK um, is where I can say that growing up, in a environment where there were gangs and things like this, um, I found myself, you know, um, clinging or inclining to them because even um, at home, I could say that there wasn't much of happiness, even though I had a full house, a full family. So then I was looking for family outside. So I found my friends or older friends to be like my brothers, those who would take care of me and such. So yeah, that was how the, my childhood kind of was. Just a question though, because obviously I know there is um, you know, gang culture, especially in London, but why would you say that you lent towards that? Because you know, lots of lots of teenagers are exposed are around gangs, or you know, they live in places where there are gangs, but they don't go down that road. Why would you say that you went there? Um, I believe that I think everyone in well, I'll talk about myself. I believe that I was looking for um a family, people who cared about me, people who um, accepted me and I believe that the people that were around me that they were all friends and again because we were all friends then all of us were kind of inclined to doing the same thing so then if um, one did one thing that the other one just followed so who were you were you the follower or were you the person that would kind of instigate things when I was um, much younger I, I believe I was the follower because at home, like I said, I never had an older brother. So those who cared for me at the time or at least supposedly showed me some sort of love or in my mind, that's what it was. Um, so then I just followed. I just went along. And because of that, then I got involved with, you know, um, gangs. I, even though I was not, I would say that I was affiliated. Um, because when you're young, you're not yet in they just hang you around, use you for the time being. So then um, my father found out and then through that, he then sent me away to, because by this time we moved into Birmingham. That's the first city we moved into. Then we, my dad sent me by myself to live with my uncle because I got involved with gangs and he did not like that. And then there was troubles that were coming along and when he found out, he sent me to Leeds. Oh, wow. So Leeds was supposed to be the fresh start. Yeah. So 
when Leeds was supposed to be the fresh start, I was away from, you know, the environment. But then that's when um, I then started to focus on football. Um, always trying to... In a, way, in a way, it was a positive move then. It was. It was a positive move. But again, I was away from family. I was away from home. I was away from supposedly uh, an older brother or, you know, my mum or dad. Again, I felt I oh, was... Sorry. Can I just ask why you say supposedly? Because you mentioned the older brother a few times. Why why do you say that? The way that why do I say it? Because um my older brother, he really wasn't really like an older brother to me. Okay. He um he basically he bullied me actually. Oh. in school. Yeah, he used to when I was younger, I would I was um um chubby and he would bully me in front of his friends in school because we both went to the same school. Okay. So instead of him protecting me and, and supposedly helping me as an older brother, he, he never really gave me money. He never really gave me anything. So then people outside gave me much more in my mind than he did. Okay. I understand because I also went to the same school as my older sister and I, I actually felt secure because she was there and I always knew that she had my back. She was looking out for me whenever we could, we would meet up in the school. So I can imagine how that must have been for you, not having that, that kind of yeah. blanket there. Funny enough, the people I was around with knew him as well. And there was a time where even a situation happened where they were playing the games, but people came to me and said, no, your brother got, you know, um, there was a fight, your brother was involved. So much so that I got even the older olders to go and try and sort out that problem for my brother. So then it, it's like that, that's why I never saw him as my older brother because I saw myself the older, if you can put it that way. Okay. Actually, so, just, just as a side note, just to let everyone know that um, your brother has actually changed. He's not he's not a bully anymore, right? He's also had one. <laughs> he's changed. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to put that. Yeah. Out. But, All right. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Take us back to Leeds now. So what happened in Leeds? So then in Leeds, um, that is when, you know, supposedly I was meant to have a uh, better environment, everything like this. And that's where I started to focus on football there. Um, football was my, I could say, my go-to, my escape. Because even my uncle, due to the fact um, he knew about the history in Birmingham, he was very strict with me. To the point where he said the school was literally five to ten minutes from the house. And he said, you're going to go to school and come back. And I'm going to stand here by the window and see you go and see you come. So because he didn't want me to get into that type of lifestyle again, he he kind of he was very disciplined. And his son um, is was very, how can I say, um, very studious, very obedient. Okay. So. I was meant to have the good example in him and he was older as well, but I just saw him as a nerd, the term nerd that people normally use because he was, he had glass, he had glasses, you know, as a, um, a young person, that's how I saw him. I never really, I said, oh, you're not someone I can look up to who has respect, who, you know, people like and all of these things. So then, um, from there, I stuck with football. I was um, successful, I could say, in football to the point where I even was scouted by an academy. And I was actually, um, um, had a, how can I say, a six month contract with them under 16s. And when it came to the time of um, getting a football scholarship, um, that's when I think, the fantasy that I had built for myself, I'm going to be a footballer, all of these things. That's where we all went down because I didn't get offered a um, football scholarship. Mm -hmm. So then um, from that moment onwards, I had, you know, I had that mentality, no smoking, no drinking, no anything because I want to be a footballer. So that means I need to be healthy. I need to be someone who takes care of the health, you know, yeah. sleeps I had that discipline in a sense. However, even in football, um, when then I didn't get this contract, that's when everything that 
I had in mind went out the window. So now I needed to look for a second second dream or a second goal, a second plan. It was like and, you were living, you were living for that dream because you know, if you if you're so disciplined just because of a career, it's like mm. you didn't really care about your life. You were your life was the football. So now yeah. that you, know, you didn't have that anymore, then you could just do what you wanted, basically. That's it. So then the moment I didn't get a um, contract, that's when, you know, because in football, um, I could say that many people who played football with me at that time, they didn't make it. So then they started to incline into drug dealing. Oh, wow. Okay. So then it's like, okay, you didn't make it as a footballer. So everybody's doing this. So let's do that. So with me, because I already had... Um, a sense of understanding by that point I said you know what let me go into um you know college let me study and I had a interest in um, computer computer science yeah. and technology and things like this so then the school even helped me to to even work or work experience at the school IT um support room which then I was going as well well with that then when I went into um you know yeah sixth form college um I got a new people because I was still trying to do football at the same time but those who I knew that now stopped football became drug dealers I also knew them so now I started to hang around with them as well and then that's when slowly when I reached the age of 18 that's when I said okay let me now try some of these things that they are trying. So I used to then go to parties. That's when I started to um, drink. And by the age of 18, that's the time when I started to go to university. And all this time, my parents had already moved to Leeds. I was living now with my parents at a certain point with my brother, because they also moved to Leeds. And... From that point, there was a lot of fighting at home, a lot of debts at home. And from there, whenever I wanted something, I could never have. Whenever I needed something, mom, can I buy this? Or mom, can you buy that? People at school have this or at college, can I have this? And, you know, I, I managed to get, you know, the stadium jobs that people normally get. And I used to work for a bit, but it wasn't enough because it wasn't, a constant thing and every time I wanted something there was never money so then I started to want to have things and could not have and then I saw that my friends who were you know drug dealers they had money they had the latest things they had the things that um, I didn't have so then when I went to university um, I, that's when I got involved with drug dealing as well, because then I was trying to make some extra money for me to have. And on top of the university money that you would get and things like this. So then from there, all of this was happening and I couldn't sleep at night. I never felt valued. I, I could say that, you know, I you had the money. You were able to get the things that you wanted. You had the money. And everything, mm -hmm. the partying lifestyle, but still wasn't enough. So first, the football didn't didn't do it for you. Mm -hmm. And then, and even if you had the football career, that still wouldn't have done it for you. And now mm -hmm. you've got the money, but you're mm -hmm. still not fulfilled. Yeah. So then it's like, now I had these things and it's like, I'm supposed to be happy. Yeah. I'm supposed to have, you know, at least some happiness, you know, having new things. And because this is what I wanted. But you could see that it doesn't matter how many things we have, if there's a void in here that that cannot be filled by things, then you see that you, you go in, in that cycle, you're going to always want to want things and fight for things because that supposedly brings some sort of happiness. So, yeah, I um, from that point, I couldn't sleep at night. I had sleep paralysis. I, you know... I could say I had depression, but not in a state of being alone. But when I was alone, I I didn't have peace. I sometimes cried myself to sleep. I wasn't happy with my life. Um, I wasn't happy with my family. I wasn't 
I wasn't happy at all. But if people would see me outside, they'd think that I am happy because that's what I would portray. So, Daniel, how, so, how did your life change then? Because obviously I know you're not the same person today. Can you talk us through, you know, what happened and what you learned and that, that changed your life? Mm -hmm. So um, it came to the point where I came to the church, the Yusukiji Help Center. And even though I was born into a Christian household and I used to go to church before, I used to go for my parents. Mm -hmm. I used to attend because of my parents. Um, I never had, how can I say, a faith of my own. Mm -hmm. Again, following. <laughs> so when I was going, I... Yes, I would hear the, the word that was being said, but it would never go in because my mind was focused on other things, football, you know, money, clothes, all of these things. Mm -hmm. So when it came to the point where I really needed help because I got in trouble with drug dealers and things like this, then I, I went back to church and I said to myself, I said, look, I can continue this life or I can now pursue God and see where that's going to take me because I've I've taken football it didn't work for me I, I've taken um, money it didn't work for me I've taken drinking smoking it didn't work for me so I'm going to now give um, you know God a try I'm going to use faith I'm going to try this with all my strength just as I tried with all my strength everything else so from that point word from that point onwards um, I started to, you know, come and actually listen for me, listen for myself and understand and, and even, you know, question when I had questions. And I, from that moment onwards, when I, I started to go back to church, I understood that, okay, so this is why I was created. So this is why um, I feel like this. This is why I have, you know, um, sadness. This is why I'm not happy. Because with all the materialistic things that we may um, gain, we will never be satisfied because there will always be something new. But we understand that through God, I understood that with God, you will be satisfied yeah. with what you have. Mm -hmm. And with God, you'll be you'll be happy because he will give you happiness. So as long as you um, let go of these things, for example, how did I overcome supposedly sadness, sleep paralysis and all these things? By trusting in the word of God instead of trusting in the word of people, instead of trusting in my own dreams. But now I wanted to know and find out what was God's dream for me? What was God's plan for me? What's God's word saying about me? Because before I was going through perhaps friends, family, people's opinions, oh, you're, you're good at this and you're good at that. And you go and do those things because of what people are saying to you, but not actually because you sat down and you thought, okay, this is the plan. This is what I want to do. And that's what I did when it came to God, because God gave me the ability to think. Yeah. And this time I'm now thinking and during this time, I was already at university and I was close to failing. But as I found God and I heard about how I could use my faith, that's when I started to believe in myself. I started to have um, self-esteem. I started to, you know, invest in me as a person and build myself and know who I am. And through that, that's when I was able to finalize my uni degree. And then I went on to work within the degree. And after that, you know, I started to, to do more. So I wanted to, to do more for God. As God changed me, I wanted to help change others. So then through that, God also blessed me with um, my beautiful wife that I have. I'm now married. <laughs> and my family, I can say that we are all in the presence of God, we are happy with each other. We communicate. My older brother, I communicate with him. He communicates with me. Now I know that the love that I was searching for him and my family, they couldn't give to me because only God could. Yeah. So then 
that's how uh, my life changed because I made decisions. I had to make decisions for my own. I had to stop listening to the world, what people would say, what my feelings said about me. And I started to listen to different words, positive words, words that came from the word of God, the Bible. And that's what changed my life around because I made decisions not upon people, but upon the word of God, which then led me to have all these accomplishments that I currently have today. It's really important what you said, the fact that you were actually attending the church before didn't change your life. Why? Because you were just going there to please parents or because they said you had to go or whatever. But the, the moment that you actually went to church and started to really take in, concentrate and be there ready to hear something that will change your life, that's the only time that you know, things started to change. And it is really important to mention because how many people go to churches, you know, they, they're getting some kind of help, but, you know, they're just sitting there and they think just by attending, it's like, a, you know, you're just clocking in. The fact that I've gone to church or that I've prayed, you know, it's enough. It's going to change my life. And when it doesn't, they get disappointed and they think, oh, this, this stuff doesn't, this God stuff doesn't work. And it's not that this God stuff doesn't work. It's because you haven't done it right. <laughs> and, you know, something that we learn, we learn at the Universal Church is, how to apply things. So we get the advice based on, like you said, the word of God, and then it's up to us to apply that. And when you apply it, it's a way that you are activating something inside of you called faith that will then bring about the changes, the positive changes. And, you know, and apart from that, because it's not just the physical things we're talking about here, you know, you know, getting rid of the depression and stuff, something amazing happens, which is when, the your, you have an inner transformation so this void and stuff that you felt was completely filled you became a new person it's not like you're you know you're holding yourself not to drug deal anymore not to do all those no it, it's not you anymore you you've changed as a person you've changed as a human being you're not the same Daniel as you were before and this is something that's available to everyone isn't it most definitely and it, it's like um going to school you have those who go through year seven to year eleven just passing because they, you know, go to school. But there are those who excel. Those who excel by putting into practice what the teachers are saying, put into practice what is being said. And the inner change only happened when I put into practice. The inner change only happened when I obeyed what the word of God said. So it's what you said, Chris, that if we put things into practice, things will change. If we go by feelings, emotions, Nothing is going to change. One day we feel happy, another day we feel sad. But when we understand who we are truly, mm -hmm. then we are able to make decisions upon what's going to better us. Yeah. But what happens many times is that people, they don't know who they are and they prefer people to tell them who they are or who they should be or how they should be. And when you don't have a mind of your own and you don't know who you are, your decisions are not yours. Your decisions are everybody else's. So it's a matter of just making your decision and turn yourself inside and out. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So, Dan, you're actually now based in Plymouth. Right. And I think in a week's time, you're going to be at a certain location. Is it going to be open every day? The location? Yes. Yeah, can you give us the address? Sure, it is um, 5557 Exeter Street, Plymouth, PL4 0AH. And you will be there every day? Be right? there every day. There, you know, if, you, if someone wants to hear more about your story, they live in Plymouth or, you know, surrounding areas, they want to hear your story, they want to just find out more about how you overcame everything that you were going through, you'll be available to, to speak to them and help them out. Most definitely. Wonderful. Daniel, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you. It's really inspiring. Thank you so much. So everyone, we've reached the end of today's program and I'm sure you found Daniel's story helpful and inspiring. And don't forget, you could also be a real life story on our program in the future and it doesn't have to take long. You know, I was um, speaking to a, a young lady uh, the other day and she was saying, um, you know, she, she's been getting help from our help center. And then she said 
something quite interesting, which I think is maybe something that other people think about. She said, it's going to take quite, quite a lot of time. Well, it's going to take time to recover. But who said it has to take time? Just because you've had a mental health issue or depression or anxiety for a long time, it doesn't mean that it will also take a long time to recover. Actually, in my case, it was just a matter of months. So in less than a year, my whole life had transformed. So if you start to, if you're thinking it's going to take a long time, it's going to take a long time because you're going to miss opportunities. Maybe you're not going to exercise, use your faith as you could because you're expecting something to take a long time to happen. I'm not saying that it'll be quick. Things, you know, great things don't happen overnight either. Although, to be honest, it, the panic attacks for me stopped the first visit uh, when, I, when I actually attended the church. But the, the total life transformation took a, f a bit longer, a few months, as I said. So it's not going to be overnight, but it doesn't have to take ages. Because once you believe, once you exercise, once you act upon what you learn, your life can be completely transformed. And it doesn't have to take long. It can still happen this year. You can see great changes already this year. All right. So if you want to know the nearest UCKG Help Center, Universal Church, as we're also called, to you, you can visit our website, which is uckg.org forward slash addresses. And we're ready and willing to help you. Bye-bye for now. Beat Depression UK show on Liberty Radio. Beating depression through the power of faith.